So for all of those that are watching now and are saying, I want to experience the glory, or what do I need to do to get there, to take it to the next level? Everything's got to come back to mm. relationship with Jesus. I'm not seeking the glory for the sake of the glory. Amen. I'm seeking the Holy Spirit. But the end result was that the gl his glory, he is the spirit of glory. When you have relationship with him him and you walk with him, uh, you begin the, the manifestations of glory begin to happen without you striving. But this was different. It's a felt anointing that, that came upon me, and I knew exactly what it was for. It was for supernatural weight loss. And Come then I got, I got this download of all these scriptures that hey. speak to it, and it really the deliverance aspects of it. You know, like wow. if you have bitterness, then your belly will swell. Numbers chapter 5. I actually learned that from wow. Peter Susan. And the garments of praise for spirit of heaviness. I learned from a trauma therapist that people, when people um, get rid of depression, they actually lose weight. So there's a connection. So you gotta you got to praise your way through the heaviness because heaviness – Heaviness, heavy thinking, depression is, is a habit for many people. It's a habit. Wow. And you can praise wow. your way off of it, out of it, and you get the heavy off of you and the heavy comes out of you. You know, so he gave me this whole download, this whole teaching. Wow, such an honor uh, to have you on. Thank you so much. And uh, we're really excited to even have you uh, at our conference in Orange County, the Greater Glory OC, um, with yourself and Doug Addison. That's going to be in November yes. as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, represent, you are in Turlock, California. Uh, so you're in Central California. I'm here in L.A. in Southern California. So we got California in the well, house. I think it's and, important um, that we point out. I used to be just North and South California. Okay. And at some point, uh -huh. we carved out a Central because Central has a role. Yeah. You know, to to bridge north and south, uh -huh. and so so that was something we made it. We made a point of that about uh, six or seven years ago that we're going to be central and make a point of it and and play a, the role that God wants us to play in California and, and serve the north and serve the south, Come and on. and do that. So. Amen. Well, absolutely. I know that Central California, there are, mm -hmm. you know, uh, even the Central Coast, mm -hmm. you know, Santa Maria, a number of uh, pr prophets, prophetic voices there. Yeah. And even Central California, known as the breadbasket right. of the world. Why don't you just talk to us real quick, Jennifer, just the importance of Central California and the hidden gem that it is with all the fields and the bugs and the agriculture well, and all that. Just so. to preface that, <laughs> there, was a, there was a prophetess by the name of Rachel Hickson who wrote out a prophetic word uh, years, years ago, at least a decade ago, and she began to call out um, the blessings of North Central and south and she was talking about south you know uh you know being about uh, generations and and um you know uh, honoring those generations and of course the miracles and the signs and you know all of the the good god stuff um she carved out central in a really unique way um of course we you know just prophetically the bread basket and bringing bringing bread to the world but also she carved out the propensity for prayer and intercession and warfare which ministered to me because i dealt with a unique uh, warfare here that none of my friends could really speak into at the time. And we were pioneering uh, how to navigate the spiritual realm at a whole new level, uh, learning um, a whole new level of intercession, not realizing we were going to, uh, you know, that this was going to go around the globe and, and bring people into a place of intercession, which, you know, once you, you do the warfare, then heaven opens and you can, and the glory comes, you know? So, so I've noticed that, that there's the, the warfare uh, uh, brings a pathway, uh, creates a pathway for the glory of God to actually emerge. And so just not realizing what our role was and of course she talked about north about the, the miracles and signs and 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 they were going to flow through california and, and the globe and everything she just really completely nailed it and it's at that point that we we i remember we did a conference specifically and we carved out central on purpose and so you know just just so we could define our role mm. on how we will serve um the rest of california as well as the globe so wow amen i thought uh it's so interesting even this quote mm -hmm. that i typed in right here uh, the warfare brings a pathway for the glory of God to emerge. Now, um, uh, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, just for you to just revelate on that or to expand sure. a little bit, I'm sure that's going to help a lot of people that sure. are Sure, there's some right camps now. that really, um, they, they, they really try to diminish that aspect of our Christianity. And, and I've called, I refer to it as the tension of two extremes. Some camps that just want to see Jesus, we're just going to, mm. we're just going to be encounter people. We're not going to, you know, talk about the devil. You know, those are the extremes, of course. And, and then you have others who are on the other mm. extreme, it's all about the devil. It's all about warfare. And really it's both, you know, and, and, and so, but at the same time, you know, there is, uh, we've heard going from glory to glory, that means you go from battle to battle.
the victory and those who overcome, they get authority over, over what nations. And so in order to bring uh, in, you know, in order for heaven to open over nations, there's the connection to prayer and intercession. Uh, Jesus prayed mm-hmm. and heaven opened. We see in Isaiah, when Isaiah, it's almost like he's shouting, you know, rend the heavens and come down. And if you look in that passage, you, you mm-hmm. read into it, the connection was prayerlessness. The reason the heavens were closed was prayerlessness, mm-hmm. you know, and idolatry, of course. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, bringing people back mm-hmm. to the basics, you know, intercession, prayer, worship, uh, you know, and what that does in the spiritual realm, it, it uh, you know, you, you learn to take authority over demonic entities that unless the church goes before, uh, goes, goes, uh, does the work beforehand, um, you know, to bind those things, destroy those things as the Holy Spirit leads. Okay. You know, it's like, it's like, you don't have the freedom. You don't have the open heaven to see the glory of God fall. And I, I, I remember at our mm. last um, institute here, it was a, uh, it was the glory and prayer institute that we had. Um, uh, that mm. was with myself, Patricia King and apostle John Eckhart. And there was a point in time where the Holy Spirit spoke and he says, you need to go after the Python spirit. That's Acts 16. You know, it's, it's totally mm. biblical. He says, you need to go after that spirit. And I see that very, very often active in um, prophetic cultures. It just seems to slip in, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times people don't even realize what's happening and they can't pray. They can't, they can't prophesy, you know, it's constricting them. It's taking their breath. You know, they think they've got allergies and respiratory issues. And I'm like, no, you've got a Python problem. And so, so anyway, the Lord mm. spoke and there's quite a bit of warfare around it. We broke that thing. I watched so many people puke and convulse in the front of the room. And I'm not, I'm not, I hate conditioning people into those kind of manifestations. I don't do it. But that's what happened. Once that happened, once we got through that, we broke through that barrier. The glory mm. and the miracles fell. And we started seeing miracle outbreaks, like crazy stuff. You know, um, the little weight loss, um, you know, miracle healings and, and different stuff. And, and it was just like we needed the, we needed the intercession, the warfare. The, you know, and I have intercessors praying all the time at these events. And, you know, we, we needed to break through that. Then the glory was released. Mm. Well, so good. Jennifer, you're, you're saying so much right now. And I'm, I'm getting so many gold mm. nuggets and tidbits here. Uh, but... Uh, how do you understand, uh, you know, that the dimensions of glory and you discern, distinguish the spirits so that you could uh, manifest the glory in a greater corporate way and break you? Just like, as you said, you, you said that you were sensing the Python spirit, Acts chapter 16. And once you declared the thing, it broke through and the power of God. Came. So for all of those that are watching now and are saying, I want to experience the glory. Oh, what do I need to do to get there, to take it to the next level? How, how do I discern that? So what would your well, uh, advice two, be Well, two things. That? I discerned it because I've been actually dealing with that type of spirit uh, for a couple of years. And the way I've learned territorial spirits is I actually, mm. uh, the wow. Lord will put me in a situation where it actually gets engaged. And that's how I've learned it. I've learned Python that way, Jezebel that way, religion that way. I've, I've learned them all Shoot. by just, all just right. ter- yeah, yeah. terrain and territorial taking, to be honest with you and that's just how i learned them um and so uh because i've been very familiar um with python over the last couple of years when i started getting very ill in my lungs at the onset of this institute i was like wait a minute i don't think this is a sickness i actually think this is an attack and then i had a, a, yeah. a intercessors in the back room uh one in particular she said all of a sudden she went into a, a very strange asthmatic like um uh you know fit and she says she went into that and all of a sudden it broke and when it broke off of her, because she was the intercessor, it broke off of me. And all of a sudden, I'm like, I called it out. Mm. I called I called the people to the front. They started, you know, doing their thing. And then after that, the glory came. You know, so so I learned that through experience. Now, when it comes to carrying the glory, however, okay, I, I'm still learning, you know, because it's glory to glory. You never arrive. You know, there's always a next place. Yeah. You know, the, the river, the Ezekiel River, if you read that, you read into that, it's a river that you can never cross. In other words, it never ends. So, so if you think you've been there, done that, you haven't, um, you know, so never stop. Uh, believing that there, there's more and it really has to do with you know that power shift in the earth and, uh, until jesus returns we're in this power struggle um yes he paid for it on the cross but we are enforcing what he he paid for on the cross and we'll just journey Come into on. that and keep journeying into that until he returns mm-hmm. um and so so you've never arrived uh, arrived when it comes to the glory and it, for me that all started when i begin to seek and pursue a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I mean, everything's got to come back to relationship with Jesus. I'm not seeking the glory for the sake of the glory. I'm seeking the Holy Spirit. But the end result was that the glory, his glory, he is the spirit of glory. When you have relationship with him and you walk with him, uh, you begin, the, the manifestations of glory begin to happen without you striving. You know, mm. um, you still have, mm. I feel you still have to learn it because they feel different, different miracles and different things. They feel different. <laughs> And, mm, and I'm good. still learning that, but you know, I feel like my, I feel like my menu is much broader this year than it was last year. And that's just because I'm just pursuing the spirit mm. of God, the, the spirit of glory. 
And so that's that's what I would bring it back to you and start talking to the Holy Spirit. Mm. Tell him okay. I want to learn friendship. He loves your words of endearment. He really does. Come on. He wants nearness with you. And he's the one who's here. Jesus is still on the throne. Come the Holy Spirit's here. So let's not ignore him. Come on. Wow, so good. Jennifer, uh, you're, you're on fire for sure. And uh, this is so good. Uh, and all of you that are watching now, if you're enjoying it, give us some hearts, likes, and do share, share, share this on your wall because there's a lot of great glory nuggets revelation here. Uh, uh, w one thing that I thought you said earlier, Jennifer, it's so uh, interesting. You said it seems that your menu is broadening. I really like that terminology, yeah. your menu. You know, uh, I mean, once you went from milk, now you're going to bread, now you're going to steak, now you're going to honey, you're going right. to do wine. So, so talk to us. What do you mean about your menu has been broadening, expanding this year? What does that mean? Well, you know, it's like I'm accustomed to uh, the prophetic in a certain way. You know, yeah. I, I got used to the prophetic, I know prophetic intercession, prophesying, all that kind of stuff. Um, I, I, you know, if you needed healing, it was typical for me. I would speak to your body part because I know how to prophesy a miracle. I know how to do that. Um, but during, in the midst of all that journey, uh, I was, I've was been hardcore after a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And mm -hmm. over a period of time, you know, I've, I've learned friendship with the Holy Spirit. I've learned his felt presence, you know, when he comes and he rests upon you, Isaiah 11 and 1. And I, I've just learned those things about him. And I've seen an increase in the anointing, but it was mostly bent on deliverance. You know, I, I have a very mm -hmm. strong deliverance bent. I'm an intercessor. I've come out of the occult. I hate the occultic stuff, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, you know, the cult and the occultic uh, elements. And and, and so I came out of that. So I hate that stuff. I smell it. I, you know, it's like I go after it. And I'm, uh, and I'm basically up until this season, it seemed like the Lord would send me um, to different territories to do land deliverance so that the gospel could be preached. The church mm. could be free. OK, so uh, I started writing the book Glory Carriers. Um, and again, the, the focus was about uh, the re relationship with the Holy Spirit, um, how to have relationship with the Holy Spirit and the, and the end results of that. And so I'm writing the last chapter of that book and I'm I'm, uh, you know, I'm basically studying the unusual manifestations of glory, what we would consider unusual, most of us, you know, not, yeah. it's not unusual to God, it probably wasn't unusual, you know, it's not unusual to pockets of, of believers in different nations, but, but I would say for the most part, uh, to the more traditional, even traditional uh, Pentecostal charismatic, it's unusual. And so I was studying those, wanting to just uh, write into it and just begin to awaken that, because, you know, when you write these books, you're writing to a broad market, you're not writing to a niche market, you know, and so I'm yeah. writing to the broad market, and I'm saying, well, let's, let's open this up, and I'm studying it. And and I'm I, you know studying you know the oil you know which I've had this happen you know when you're, the oil comes yeah. out of your hands or you glitter oh. up or all those kind of yeah. you know the angel feathers and stuff and I'm not fixed on that I'm like it just tells me what he's doing and so I got to the supernatural weight loss miracles and I thought this is really odd I like supernatural weight loss and you better understand I'm a fitness person mm. you know and, mm. and I have a certain way of thinking about that and I'm not like I'm not like really biased or judgmental with people who just you know can't can't seem to get their body in, in a um a, wor a working condition you know I didn't really have a, a judgment but I still my mind says, you know, let's let's work on the exercise. Let's work on the diet. That's what my mm -hmm. where I would land. And I started looking at those supernatural weight loss miracles. And I thought this is really interesting. And and the, I call them the gurus, you know, these weight loss gurus. I'm like, it looks like a kind of a method to this and how they how they apply this. And I just thought I'd ask around and see if some friends of mine had ever experienced it. I want to know if they yeah. experienced the miracle. And I had some come back and say yes that they had. And then I kid you not, you know, I'm just like asking questions because I want I want to write about it. That's all I wanted to do. And I'm asking questions. And I kid you not, this felt annoying came on me it's a felt anointing mm. you know i know the the, re, the the resting of the spirit upon you i know that right. but this was different it's a felt anointing that, that came upon me and i knew exactly what it was for it was for supernatural weight loss and Come then on. i got i got this download of all these scriptures that hey. speak to it and it really the deliverance aspects of it you know like wow. if you have bitterness then your belly will swell numbers chapter five I actually learned that from wow. you know um, mm. uh, women primarily some men women who who gain weight on purpose because they think they're going to be preyed on and they have they use weight to protect themselves yeah. wow. it's like okay you know we need to make the lord our shield and he will reward you and and the garments of praise for spirit of heaviness i learned from a trauma therapist that people when people um get rid of depression they actually lose weight so there's a connection so you gotta you gotta praise your way through the heaviness because heaviness heaviness heavy thinking depression is is a habit for many people it's a habit wow. and you can praise wow. your way off of it out of it Stop. and you get the heavy off of you and the heavy comes out of you you know so he gave me this whole download this whole teaching you know which um i actually you know have a, a like a very rough 20 minute video on youtube anybody can look at it and work through yeah. it and then i have some more extensive stuff on it but that one i usually is my go-to but anyway um so he started talking about it and i thought if this is real if this is real i don't need to do what i call and i, I say this you know just in jest i don't need to do it the way the gurus do it i, I can do this online if, if this is real so I, I did a facebook live to see if it was real and i started getting testimonies back before losing 
lose any weight. It wasn't like it wasn't like huge, but it was enough to say something was going down. Mm. Then I did the YouTube video, and I got a whole bunch more. Then I just started ministering it in different places, and then it just started picking up and rolling. And pretty much everywhere I'd go, we had this miracle uh-huh. happen uh, in some dimension. But then it started going from weight loss to hair restoration. Yeah, now, yeah. now it's, what's starting to happen is the teeth miracles, and you know, mm. um, uh, instant deposits into bank accounts. I mean, it's, I'm just like, are you kidding me? I never mm. saw myself being this kind Shout of person. Out. I just thought yeah. I'd be the personal, I prophesied to the land, I prophesied to the, to the leaders. Mm. And, and now it's like, it's like a whole new language, a whole new menu is coming and it just uh-huh. keeps going. And mm. it's fascinating, but you, you can feel it when it comes on you, you can feel it. But I find that a lot of um, camps are, are not quite ready for it. Like you have to do a measure of work mm. there. Um, yeah, and good. secondly, it requires uh, some element of faith. But but I'm praying that the Lord will give something to me that I can just break through it easier on their wow. behalf and just, just awaken this glory realm to them. Um, because, you know, it's like the Lord wants to encounter people with miracles that we thought he would never, ever care about or do. I mean, to have your hair grow when you can't grow your hair. You know, for women especially, for men, I don't think it's a big deal. But for women, when you, you're you got bald spots and stuff, it's a big deal. And you know, mm-hmm. to see their hair get restored, I've seen, I've had uh, oh. testimonies of hair like instantly growing. Um, or they'll come back to me later and they'll say, you know, it started growing after uh, you prayed over me. And they'll show me like three months later, they'll show me their hair. And you know, it's just like oh. and now, now the teeth miracles are starting. That's the one I've been after recently is the teeth miracles. You know, where your teeth gets fixed. Um, you know, whether the Lord gives you gold in your mouth or not, I've, I've seen that. That happened to me like once you know but mm. but regardless i don't care i so just you know, teeth miracles and it's just it's just going to keep going that's what i think is going to happen it's just going to keep going god's going to just just show himself that he will he will do anything that come you on. need to fix you need you know don't put anything past him to not on. fix it come on so good jennifer there's such the power of god is so present right now and i know impartation healing waves of glory is is literally being transmitted through this Facebook live broadcast. I know we have maybe about five more minutes. Um, and uh, at the end of it, I do want you to pray. I know right now people are experiencing the power of God on your body, uh, weight loss miracles, dental miracles, yeah. hair miracles. Um, you know, uh, we've seen that in our ministry countless yeah. times. Yeah. Um, but uh, in the last five minutes before we close, because I, I want to be so mindful of your time, our time here. Uh, you know, really, it, it seems like, you, you know, you're. I, I keep telling people, Jennifer, uh, you're, you're one of the hottest things uh, outright. I totally lost you. What'd you say? <laughs> say it Literally again. <laughs> shooting you out right now. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, you have such a fun heart. You know, you have such a childlike spirit. Increasing, you know, it's accelerating for sure. But, you know, how, how are we handling and managing all of this right now? Because, uh, you know, the favor and hand of God is definitely on your life. And, you know, I, th- I salute you as well, even as a woman of God, you know. Uh, another Ruth, Ruth Heflin, you know, Catherine Coleman. Uh, you know, how am I managing? You know, I, I just really live out of his presence. There's one thing I never miss is my, my time, my set time of prayer every day with the Lord. And I'm surprised that I'm able to carve out the amount of time I'm able to carve out and still live uh, as big as I live. And it just tells me that the Lord knows how to do stuff with time. He knows how to do stuff with um, uh, with with your, uh, with your what he's called you to do. I feel such a grace. I have energy. I have life. I, I, I'm not making any of this up. You know, I, I freak people out all the time, you know, with everything that I do because they're like, how do you do it? And I said, honestly, I just do what God calls me to do and I leave the rest to the side. But there's one thing I don't miss is my set time of prayer. I will let things go just to keep that time with the Lord. Um, you know, set time, you know, I don't know. I just, I feel like I have his grace and strength, kind of like the, you know, Elisha, when you could run as fast as, as the, you know, the chariots and stuff. I, I really have something on my life. Um, I live out of one verse of, um, and I, I quote it a lot is that when you, when, when you are in the presence of the Lord, um, you know, you, you renew your strength like the Eagles and you run right. and you're, you're not weary and you walk and you don't faint. And so that's, I, that's how I live. It seems like simple, but that's, you know, that's my secret. <laughs> mm. So good, so good. Uh, as we're about to bring this to a close, I want to ask you one more question, uh, Jennifer. Um, uh, glory carriers, you know, uh, you said you're radically pursuing hunger and after the Holy Spirit relationship with God, and, you know, you're experiencing these glory manifestations of glory carriers. Uh, why is it important for us to realize and understand that we are glory carriers? Well, it really, again, bring it back to relationship, okay? Uh, you know, I, I never got into this because I wanted to wow anybody or impress anybody. 
this came out of relationship with the spirit of God. And, and I just want to, you know, do what he's doing. You know, it's like this beautiful communion, this beautiful dance. It's kind of like, you know, when you speak in tongues, you know, you're having a communion with your words, with the spirit of God. Well, now in the realm of miracles, it's a communion with the spirit of God. I get to feel him uh, in a way that I hadn't felt, felt him before. And it fascinates me. And then I also have a goal to see people free on levels that, you know, we've never, we've never crossed before. Freedom is important, you know, and, and just like the reason the whole thing about weight loss is about captive destinies being set free, you know, because you, if your body isn't healthy, you can't live out your purpose. You can't do what God's called you to do. That's what the whole point of it is, is to set you free to live out your eternal purpose that began in eternity and will finish in eternity. And so, so if you are succumbed to the spirit of heaviness in a way that you are like, you are wow. lethargic, you are chronically, chronically yeah, um, uh, in bed, you can't get out of bed. You have no life to you. You can't do what God's called you to do. Um, you know, and the Lord wants to set you free of that because you have to live out your purpose. People you don't know yet are counting on you living out your purpose. You've got to do it. And I challenge you because you can no longer have an excuse. So, so no good. more excuses. There's freedom for you. So, and one thing, uh, this is so good, Jennifer. Uh, one thing I think is great, I mean, uh, both yourself and your husband, uh, your senior pastors of Harvest yeah. Church in Charlotte, California. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, not only are you, you know, doing itinerant ministry, you know, seeing uh, territories, lands come under the presence of God, but you're actually hosting something in Central California. Yes. Now, you know, talk to me because I'm a local uh, senior pastor, local yeah. church pastor. We have two churches and, you know, we go all around the world. But talk to us about the different dynamic and authority in the local and the global, the local and the itinerant. And then afterwards, we're going to close with a prayer of impartation. Okay. Sure. I, yeah, yeah. my husband really, he's like the regional guy, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he you know, he's the one who's, who's got uh, this whole structure and, 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 you know, uh, uh, teaching leadership and, and the anointing the supernatural and, and releasing people from ministry on, on a local level. And he does it with excellence. I mean, we have like three services Sunday morning between two campuses. We've got two more gatherings in two other cities uh, nearby. And he's, he's the one like, he focuses on that. That's him. I'm the global person. I'm out the door and I'm constantly, you know, um, uh, shouting, you know, what we have built here into the global arena. So in that yeah. sense, this is kind of like my, my, um, I, I would say my greenhouse in that sense. And we've, we've, practiced everything here we verbalized everything here we shaped everything That's here good. and now we're shouting it i'm the shouter um, um you know so we have a good balance between my husband and myself usually it's the other way around but but it didn't go that way the, you know the lord sent me out and he stayed in for the most part and it, it's really been a beautiful partnership that way wow so good so good such a strength such a glory yeah. uh jennifer uh before we just close in a prayer of impartation uh is there anything uh, i know you have uh, your institute coming up but is there anything on your heart you would like to say share uh, you know, how can people find you and follow you and all that? Well, I'm on all the social media, either under my name, Jennifer Evaz, or Praying Prophet. And then uh, we do have the Sears and Prophets Institute, October 10th through 12th, uh, here at Harvest Turlock. Uh, we are 70% full for on campus, which is shocking because we still have a couple months out. So if you're coming on campus, you want to register now at eventbrite.com. We also have an online option. Everybody gets prophetic ministry through our prophetic team. It'll be myself, Jane Ammon, and James Gall. Um, and so that's the best way to find me. And also jenniferevaz.com, just for the, you know, the basic information. Uh, but probably my go-to. To, I'd rather see you there, to be honest with you. Oh, so good, so good. And yeah. also, uh, we want to see you in Orange County. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be with us and Doug Addison and others in, in the month of November. And right. uh, that's going to be incredible. Right. We just posted up uh, the event right link there. The Lord that's is doing that. something yes. in, in Los Angeles. There has been a clear... Uh, I don't I don't know what it is, but I've heard from others as well. We're yeah. all looking at the L.A. area and say, okay, what mm -hmm. is the Lord awakening in oh. that Southern Cal area? And it's been on my heart, been praying into it. And, and you know, just I, I, I know when the Lord begins to put me in certain places, you know, because I'm, I'm like a, a land person and I bring a freedom uh, and, and um, a balance, uh, you know, to, to the land. And, you know, because all creation speaks. And so if, where, where there's a disconnect, the intercessors, you know, they sow to the heavens and the Lord sows back into the earth. And the principle is uh, for, for, you know, creation to uh, uh, speak back. And then there's a harvest that comes as a result. That's a, that's a lot of, that's a very short encapsulated statement with a lot of teaching behind it. But I know this, when I go someplace, uh, it's, to, it's to bring an awakening and opening uh, to the heavens and bring a freedom uh, to that land. So I know that this is intentional. Uh, the timing is right. The Lord's been speaking to me about L.A. and to some others about L.A. and saying God's, God's moving there. He, he's awakening something there. Come on, so good. Well, we can't wait to have you. It's yeah. going to be a great time. It's going to be an honor. 
And uh, we, we know that you are carrying something in this hour that's relevant for the now Cairo season and even for uh, Southern California. As SoCal, yeah. Central Cal Connect, it's yes. going to be a glory combustion, a great right. glory combustion. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jennifer, wow, such a great honor. Uh, I know people are experiencing the Holy Ghost and its presence yes. right now. Uh, yes. But all, all the things, even as you were talking about it, the realms were opening up. It was coming yeah. upon people. I know it. But uh, can, can you just close us off here in a prayer Absolutely. of impartation for those that are hungry for God and are wanting to experience the glory, the spirit of heaviness to be broken off and all these Absolutely. things. Absolutely. Um, so uh, I want you to just, just begin to speak to the spirit of God right now. Speak to the Holy Spirit. He's the spirit of Christ. He's the spirit of glory. And Holy Spirit, we just honor you right now. And we just invite you, your presence even more. Uh, not only on, on Ben and myself, but everybody who's connecting into this broadcast right now, who's going to listen to it later. Let your felt presence come upon them. Teach us your felt presence teach us your glory teach you teach us your realms um of glory your 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 realms of anointing and i pray heavenly father we begin to walk in a whole new um realm of miracles realm of glory not just me i'm just forerunning what what you have for everybody uh and and so lord i pray to begin to awaken um uh, miracle workers awaken um uh, awaken uh, the glory carriers awaken them to your glory like never before i pray over those captive destinies lord and i command <laughs> freedom uh, in Jesus name. Uh, whatever's going on in your physical body that has weighted you down, if it's actual weight, if it's actual fatigue, if it's if it's been diagnosed as some sort of medical issue that has, has sapped your strength and your energy. And I speak over you that the spirit of heaviness is broken in the name of Jesus. It lifts off of you. Just give him your praise right now. Give him your glory right now. And I just speak over you that that chronic fatigue is reversed. The way you deal with chronic fatigue, right, wherever you're at right now, get up and run. You have to force the issue with that thing and, and tell it to go because you'll run and not be weary. You'll walk <clears> and you won't faint. And so I command the weight to begin to melt off of you. Come um, uh, the hormone issues, a reversal to that, a balancing to your system and you're going to finish your race and you're going to finish it with strength. And you'll be like you, you'll be like uh, Caleb said, my strength was not abated. I'm 80 and I'm still running hard as if I'm a young person. And so the Lord is doing a powerful work. If you're old and you're watching this and, and you're like, I'm too old for this. I got news for you. There's a catch-up clause because but the whole thing, he restores time. He knows what wow. to do with time. And he can, he can collect time and, and catch it all up for you. Joshua spoke to the sun and the sun stood still. God can do stuff for you. You have to finish your, your calling, your purpose. You have to complete it because people are waiting for you. Uh, you are somebody else's breakthrough. And not only that, it's a joy for you to actually step into the anointing that he has for you. There'll be breakthrough everywhere you go. And so I release that over you now in Jesus' mighty name.